Heidly ho there, pumpkin friends. It's Chad from Colorado Giants. Today is June 18th. We've got a lot to catch up on since we're back from vacation, so make sure you stay tuned. I'll be right back. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and the little bell down there in this direction. That way you get a notification when we have a new video that pops up every week or so. Might be too close together, might be too far apart, but usually there's one video a week or so. As you may have seen in the last video, if you were following along with our saga, we were in Montana last week and we had an excellent time. It was good to get away and be on vacation with the kids. And I use the term vacation very loosely. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. The wife and I, we call it a trip. But irregardless, it was a lot of fun. But this week, it's back to reality. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about maintenance type things that I got going on that I need to accomplish. I'll show you some of that stuff. And I'll give you a little bit of an in-depth dive on each plant so we can catch up fully since there was no pumpkin content last week. I don't know if you could see in the shot, but we got some pumpkins on all the plants. So it's just about, you know, like kind of go time where we're stopping the plant growth and we're gonna focus on the pumpkin growth. Without further ado, let's jump into it. I had this shot all queued up nice. I did what I had to do and then I realized I didn't hit the record button. Let me check if I did. And finally, I am recording. So like I said in take one, was that I have two pumps on my uh, watering system. I have one pump that's the aero mixer that sits inside the tank and it makes everything, mixes everything up in there. It also injects a little bit of air. And then a side effect I found with the aero mixer is that if you leave it on overnight, it warms up your water, big bonus. The problem with that, with my system directly, is that I have cone bottom tanks. When I add something like a uh, powder, like, you know, some bacillus or Moab or whatever I'm adding in, I typically will use fertilizer or a powder. Um, the issue is, is that it will kind of settle down at the bottom of the cone bottom tanks. Those aero mixer or some pump mixers are designed for flat tanks. Mine is a cone bottom. Additionally, I have plumbing at the bottom, so a lot of times all that, that, um, oh, what do you call it? The powder will kind of go down and settle in the plumbing and then not stay in suspense in the water column where you want it so that it can go out to the drip tape, be watered into the plants. So in comes my second pump. This is an inline pump. Uh, it's a Danner Mag Drive 2400, so 2400 gallons per hour. What this does is it takes the water out of the bottom, bottom of the comb bottom tank and kind of pumps it up to the top. So it does two things. It will oxygenate, oxygenate the water even more and it keeps anything in suspense better, especially powders. Um, or if, you, if I put in maybe like some, um, oh, I don't know, some silicon or something um, and those wants to bind with everything, mixing it up, agitating it, um, even more so, the double agitation just keeps things in suspense better. So unfortunately, the downside with this particular pump, unlike my drip tape pump and the aero mixer, those you can run dry. Initially, when I was setting up the automatic switching system for the greenhouse this year, I had things programmed incorrectly. I ran this dry for probably an afternoon and it, uh, it gave up the ghost, it died. But thankfully, I know a guy who can get these wholesale through a distribution company and send them back on warranty. Wapow, enter a brand new Mag Drive 24. I have most of my fittings now in the greenhouse on union fittings, so when winter comes, I can easily take them off. Or if I have my head up my rear end and I leave pumps on, for example, and I burn them up, I can easily replace the plumbing fittings on those and swap out the part to a good one. So now that I have the union fittings on here, all I need to do is plug it back in line and we can get her up and running again. At this point, I have enough stuff just hanging out in the greenhouse that I pretty much don't have to go to the garage to uh, 
to get the most common things like just a pair of channel locks or two, some Teflon, little grease, some tape, some zip ties, you know, just your, your essentials. Get the cord ready to go. So what I have here by way of valves is this is the tank that I'm using this year. With the help of my, the tank on this side, I'm really not using this one too much, honestly. With the help of my sensors, I'm realizing that I don't have to use nearly as much water as I thought that I, uh, I had to. Um, in years past, I'd be watering like 200 gallons per day. This year, um, man, if I do 100 gallons per day, that's kind of a lot of water. Which I'm sure my well pump thanks me uh, for, the, for the reprieve. So the benefit to using these union connectors they can come on, they can come off, they're really a piece of cake. They're a little expensive. I mean, these are probably, I don't know, man, these days, probably what, like 13 bucks? More so than the, you know, the $2 connector. Is $13 going to break the bank? No, but in comparison to the, just your standard, pretty pricey right tool for the job here got the giant chanel locks there we go so all i need to do to get this pump in service is to open this valve coming out of the tank wants to go to the pump no no let's say yes yes and now we have a tank that can mix from two different positions we have the aero mixer down at the bottom and then our circulation pump right there. So just so you get the full effect, the tank fills right there with the timer, comes down, it's mixing inside the aero mixer, but sediment is kind of forming, falling to the bottom, perhaps dripping down into the tape where it then goes to the pump. But now with this pump back in action, we can open up that valve, open up this one, and now we're mixing everything. So that we're always keeping whatever we're feeding the plants in suspense in this water column. And it's happy, happy, happy. The particles are not clumping, not uh, sticking together, not falling to the bottom in a sludge. So that way when the water goes into the drip tape, it comes out of the emitters nicely. And uh, we have even watering of whatever product we're mixing in. On to the next kind of maintenance -y task today. Up next on the maintenance spectacular episode is a leaky ball valve. If you don't know, this here is the wet wall. The wet wall is basically just a big swamp cooler. I have a sump pump down at the other end of this water trough down there, pumps uh, the water through this pipe that has holes drilled in the top of it. And then, uh, yeah, it trickles down. The fans at the other end suck the nice cool air through. And voila, you have rudimentary air conditioning. Swamp cooler, redneck air conditioning, whatever you want to call it. This was an issue from a few years ago, honestly. Uh, I, when I didn't drain this part and it cracked. And it's been rocking and rolling pretty good for the last uh, two years, ever since it's been broken. But now this needs fixing. The secondary issue is that usually I can adjust this a little bit. I would say 95% of the water gets used up by the time it gets here. So there's not a lot of pressure to push probably just some of the junk that's built up um, inside of the holes that I made over the years. And this is kind of a pain in the butt to get off. Fun fact, maybe a tidbit, a sneak peek for the next project. I'd like to increase the size of my wet wall so I have more pads, so I have more cooling. Um, and then I would redo all this. I'd probably take these pads and get like another 18 inches or so. But, you know, that's a, that's a winter project. So I got a fresh ball valve. All I should have to do is really pop this off and put it on because I did not glue it. So let me go turn off the pump and hopefully, Did I glue this one on? 
I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. I know this part I didn't glue. It's a little algae. -y. I need to put the uh, peroxide in here, the the Terra Grow, and kind of like you would with your pool, kind of shock the whole thing. So I must have I must have glued this. I need some cutters. Be right back. I forgot to film the chopping off of the ball valve, but I did it. And the interesting thing is, look at all this schmutz. Oop, ball valve down. That came out of it. This is all just kind of the mineral junk buildup that when it falls down, the pump pumps it through and, and just kind of gets into this system. So I'm going to go turn on the pump. And since I can't see down here, you guys tell me if anything comes out. Wow. I would say a lot of junk came out of there. So I guess that's good. That's a, a good problem that we just figured out is that uh, this thing does retain a lot of crap inside of it so I should I wonder if I can put this on and not glue it so I can like take this off on the regular just hate for this to pop off like when I'm not home. Per the comments earlier, I think a union valve or a union coupling might be in this uh, in the future. Well, it is leaking a little bit. Oh man, look at that immediately. Can I see it in the camera? Yeah, look at that. So this area that was dry, look already. Like immediately it's it's coming out so that's awesome we fixed that problem with just the replacement of a ball valve i'm gonna leave this i'm gonna go to home depot and i'll get a uh, a union here so i can take this off uh, a few times a year and drain out the uh, the system because that obviously was the problem if this whole thing probably just maybe all the way back there was just full of crap cool we fixed two problems We'll start at the back and what I'll do is give everybody kind of a general tour of each plant. The 2006 wolf plant had been my problem child plant. This area right here was, was very, very saturated with water. While I was gone, we got a bunch of water and it just, uh, the plant was just acting weird. And ultimately it was because of all the water. My good buddy Calvin came over, did some pollinations. I asked him to just check on everything. And he said, hey, let's just shut off the water. So that's what we did. That was last, shoot, last Thursday, last Wednesday or Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So six days ago, we shut off the water and it's, and it's in large part all dried out. Today was the first day that if you look along the back, maybe I'll take you back there. Maybe I won't. But you can see that I have the valves in large part turned off until we get right about here where the patch seems to kind of dry out. Uh, this plant went from being the slowest plant growth wise to the fastest while I was gone by far. It, uh, it grew probably five or six feet in the week that I was gone, which is super impressive. Uh, it still looks healthy. You know, it was getting no feed, um, just what was in the soil. So very cool that even though this plant hadn't really been watered at all, it took off like a rocket. Uh, there is a pumpkin. Let's super zoom in. There is a pumpkin right here that I would say is probably seven days away from pollination or so. And that is the first pumpkin on this plant. Um, and then there's one at the next node as well. So this one's a little late to the party, but uh, it's okay. Uh, only issue I have is that it grew so fast that there's a little split in the main vine 
in this general vicinity. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I will pollinate that one. And then I asked my buddy Don, uh, you know, if he was concerned about it. And he said, eh, not really, but maybe pollinate one on a secondary vine. So I've got a pumpkin right here that'll probably open about the same time too. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we'll just kind of see how it goes. I'll let both of them go to maybe day 15, 20, and we'll go from there. So then we'll pivot over here to the 1931 Turner. While I was gone, it was hot, real hot. <laughs> and you can see the, uh, all the vegetation I've been plucking vines off and everything getting caught up on my vine management. So there's vines everywhere. I should vine berry today, but I'm not. So, yeah. Uh, so the 1931 Turner is in the second hottest part of the greenhouse. So obviously, right, just right by the wet wall, coldest, second coldest, least coldest, or cold, warm, hot. Um, this plant doesn't have, it's a little heat wimpy which is not a big deal. I would have thought it would have been very heat tolerant with the genetics that it has. But you can tell right here that we have two or three sets of leaves that are scorched. There's a couple of vine. Well, the vine tips look pretty okay, but I've left some tertiary vines here just in case, you know, I, I need to, I need to do some wrapping. It's easy to leave them on and pinch them off later. If you pinch them off, then it's game over for that vine. So we're just going to leave them. <clears throat> While I was gone, uh, like I said, Calvin did one pollination on the new plant. And then my other friend up the street, Andrea, from, um, I believe it's Loving Acres Flower Farm. She pollinated this one and that first one over there. And they're looking really good. That was last Monday, right? Yeah. So this pumpkin is eight days old. I'm trying to get a better angle. There we go. Eight days old, probably about the size of, I don't know, a kid's soccer ball or something. Looking at it, I see a little split in the stem. I really haven't messed with this pumpkin at all. This pumpkin was crossed with the 2006 Wolf, I believe. Uh, I would have to, weird, start over. So that one is the 2006, but so is this one. If I had my way, I would rather go with this pumpkin. It will have, it would have one, two, three, four more vines. And I just like it. It's, it's a little further out, but I pollinated that on a super warm day. Like the last few days have been in the nineties and uh, oh, falling over have been in the, in the mid nineties. Uh, and it got up to a hundred and hundred and five in the greenhouse which caused all this unfortunately the my my sitter accidentally turned off the misting system so that's when that's when this happened plus it was just super hot so it's gonna get some level of burn but you know whatever but got a real good pumpkin there would rather that one both of those are, are early enough in uh early enough in the the life cycle where they could both be great the tomatoes looking good, starting to take off. I planted a little tiny watermelon plant there for actually eating. <laughs> um, 1783 new looks really good. Again, had to trim off lots of uh, tertiary vines. I'm starting to terminate vines on this. Filling it in in the back. Terminating vines. These will be terminated here real soon. And the pumpkin on this one is looking pretty good. Uh, this one would also be on Monday. Those two pumpkins were pollinated on the same day. I really like where this pumpkin is on the plant. We're about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feet back from the end wall. So it's got lots of room to grow. And then that gives me um, you know, a good bit of, you know, eight feet to fill in in front of it. Um, I'm going to try and swing the sec or the main vine over and then grow the secondary vines because the main vine tip got roasted on this one. Um, and then, then there's that other pumpkin that Calvin pollinated for me there. I like the genetics on this one better. 
This one was also pollinated with the 2006 wolf, so it should be super orange. Um, but, you know, we'll see. But I got that one as a backup, so I'll let that one go. This is the primary. This one's just along for the ride. So here pretty soon, the tips on these ones are good. There are some little roastages, roasted, roastages, roasted, roasted tips and leaves right here. The tips actually look pretty good on this side of the plant. There's maybe one or two tips that are roasted, but I've got tertiaries growing out to replace them. So it'll all be good. So that is about it. The plants are looking excellent. Uh, Jason came by today for some, some male flowers. And, uh, yeah, he seems to be having a good year. Everybody's having a good year that I talked to. No, no real disasters in, in my circle. So hopefully that uh, includes you as well. That's all I got for this one. Bit of a worry in depth update, but it's kind of fun. We're growing pumpkins now. Always a fun time of the year. Now it's kind of keep the vines buried, which I'll do on Saturday. Don't worry. Um, and, uh, just focus on the fruits. So. If you have any questions below, comment. I'll get to them. Thanks for hanging out on this Maintenance Tuesday and just the general update. We will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Oh, 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 and get out there and grow yourself a giant pumpkin.